Hello and welcome to this lecture where I want to teach you how to use global light. This is an option that shows up in your layer styles window on several effects. Bevel and Emboss has it, Inner Shadow, Drop Shadow, all of these make use of this global light and you can enable it or disable it. What does it actually do? Well, here's the scenario. I have a rectangle on my screen and I'll add a drop shadow with the following settings. Blend Mode Multiply. For the colour, I'll stick with pure black. Opacity, let's say 70%. The angle is important. I'll check global light first and now I'll set it at 125 degrees. For the distance and size, you can use anything. I'll have them at 40 and 30 pixels respectively. OK, now when there's a single layer that uses this global light option, there's nothing interesting going on. But now I'll create two more copies and these will obviously have that feature checked. That's because they're perfect replicas. Next, I'll click on any one of them and I'll adjust this angle to 45 degrees. Notice what just happened. All three of them got updated with this new value. That's because global light means we'll have a single light source on our canvas. In this case, if the shadow is going towards the bottom left, that means our imaginary light source is somewhere in the top right. This is how you maintain a normal light setting on your canvas. If we switch to a photo, can you tell where the light is coming from? Of course you can, from the back. This is relevant in Photoshop only if you want to maintain the standard way of working on a canvas, and that's by having a single point of light that comes from a certain direction, hence why we're using angles to adjust it. How about this one? That's pretty easy as well, from the left side. In general, when you're dealing with any outdoor situation, you'll most likely have photos that have one shadow. That's because, at least for the moment, we have only one sun. Now you could add another light source and you'll end up with two shadows. Here's the thing. In Photoshop, you can create imaginary light sources for every layer. Furthermore, all those independent light sources can be set to only affect that particular layer and not all the rest. Let me show you what I mean on the canvas. Seeing it makes it much easier to understand. We have this coffee cup and we're watching it from above. Now I'll shine a flashlight on it from the top left. This means we'll get a shadow that will go towards the bottom right. Simple enough. If we add another coffee cup with the global light, that will look like this. Well, the shadow will probably have a slightly different angle, but in essence, that's roughly how it would look. Now here's what you can do in Photoshop, which is a bit unnatural. On the same canvas, so let's say on the same tabletop, you can have two separate lights that shine on these coffee cups independently. The catch is they don't interact with each other, so this left light does not create a shadow for this cup on the right. If you want to be accurate, you'd have two additional shadows on your canvas, this one and this one. That's because these sources of light should have an effect over the entire canvas, but Photoshop lets you control that aspect. By unchecking the global light option, Photoshop won't create these two additional shadows. This seems unnatural if you consider your canvas as a tabletop, but in some cases you may want independent shadows that have individual sources of light. If you want to justify such a case, you can consider this tabletop as being huge and these coffee cups and lights are very far apart from each other. Now let's get back to our rectangles. In this case, for this middle shape, I'll uncheck Use Global Light and that means this drop shadow won't adhere to the normal setting where we have one light source. Now I can customise it independently as if it had its own light shining down on it, but it only affects this particular layer and not the other ones. In essence, it's pretty simple to find out how this works empirically, but I wanted to give you a complete explanation so you can better understand what's going on with your projects. A lot of professionals, even on fantastic galleries like Dribbble or Behance, still mess up their shadows. I can't say this happens because they don't understand global light or lighting in general, but because this issue is so prevalent, I decided to take a few minutes and give you a bit more information about it. To sum it up, if you use global light, be aware that any time you change it in one place, it's going to immediately update all across your canvas. Thus it can be a real lifesaver or a pain in the neck. If you customise each shadow independently, be aware that some people might find it strange if you place two completely different shadows next to each other, like I've done here. The design might seem off, even though they may not be able to pinpoint the problem that's bothering them. My advice is you avoid global light, because there's going to be tons of cases where we might want to create a special effect that requires complete control. OK, with that, we've wrapped up this lecture.